Today I have an update on the upcoming RDNA 3 GPUs that will be powering the next generation of AMD Radeon RX 7000 series graphics cards. The closer we get to the release date, the more accurate information we will see. So it is not too much of a surprise that the specifications of RX 7000 series were updated. FYI, this leak comes from Grayman55, who has a very good track record of leaking accurate information. Before that, a quick word from a sponsor. Buy your Windows 10 or 11 key for less from cdkeoffer.com at the link in the description below. Use code IV20 to get a 25% discount that brings the price down to as low as $16. You can securely check out with PayPal and receive your Windows key in minutes, ready to be activated on your PC. Let's unpack the latest news. Right now, there are three known GPUs that will be in RX 7000 series graphics cards. Those are Navi 31, which is the biggest and the most powerful out of the three, followed by Navi 32 and Navi 33. Early Navi 31 design featured a massive number of shader processors, 15,360 to be exact. For comparison, the current flagship RX 6900 XT has just 5,120 cores. But the newer version of Navi 31 now features a significantly reduced number of shader cores, 12,288. This is the GPU that is expected to be used in RX 7900 XT and RX 7800 XT graphics cards. The question is, does it mean that AMD reduced its performance target and RX 7000 series graphics cards will be weaker? Well, no. The performance target remains the same. AMD managed to keep the same performance target by achieving a much higher GPU core clock speed, in the ballpark of 3 GHz. As a result of that, AMD most likely decided to reduce the number of shader cores to get better manufacturing yields. Currently, I have not heard of any other Navi 31 spec updates, so we are still expecting it to use a multi-chip design with two GPUs packaged together to work as one. It will be manufactured on a TSMC 5nm node with some parts of the package using a TSMC 6nm node. Navi 31 is still expected to take advantage of insanely large infinity cache of 256 to 512 megabytes, at least 16 gigabytes of fast GDDR6 memory with the speed of 20 gigabits per second or higher, and have a TDP of around 400 to 450 watts. Navi 32 is also a multi-chip GPU that uses TSMC 5nm and 6nm nodes. It is expected to power RX 7700 XT graphics card. Navi 32 also had its shader core count reduced from 10,240 to 8,192. Performance targets for this GPU also remain the same despite this reduction for the same reason as in Navi 31. And here is a quick recap of other Navi 32 specs. At least 12 GB of 20 gigabit per second or faster GDDR6 memory, 256 to 384 MB of Infinity Cache, and TDP around 250 watts. Navi 33 is the only GPU that did not have any specs updated. It is still expected to feature 4096 shader cores, however, it will also take advantage of the increased GPU core clock speed. So now it makes even more sense how Navi 33 performance target is set to rival RX 6900 XT class performance. Here is a quick recap of other specs. Navi 33 is a monolithic GPU set to be manufactured on a TSMC 6 nanometer node and is expected to power RX 7600 XT. There is a very high confidence that it will feature 128MB of Infinity Cache, 8GB of 20 gigabit per second or faster GDDR6 memory, and TDP around 200 watts. Next up are my estimates for RX 7600 XT gaming performance in case you haven't seen it already. 
RX 7600 XT is going to be a mid-range graphics card that brings RX 6900 XT-like performance to the mainstream for under $500. However, considering that it will have just 8GB of memory, it is safe to say that AMD will most likely market it as a 1440p gaming GPU. FYI, the RX 7600 XT FPS values in the following charts are based on estimates. Assassin's Creed Valhalla favors AMD graphics cards, but it is still incredible to see that 7600 XT may be as much as 17% more powerful than RTX 3080 in this AAA game at 1440p. Comparing AMD to AMD cards in Far Cry 6, we see that 7600 XT may be over 20% stronger than RX 6700 XT in this type of games. Next up is Watch Dogs Legion. Looking at the results in this NVIDIA-sponsored title, it is becoming clear that 7600 XT will be a much better value than RTX 3070 is right now, even if you manage to buy a 3070 for its original $499 MSRP. Cyberpunk 2077 is notoriously difficult to run, but no worries. 7600 XT should manage to pump out about 88 FPS at 1440p, once again beating RTX 3080. All currently released games will run extremely well on a 7600 XT at 1080p resolution. However, who knows what the GPU requirements will look like with truly next-gen games that are coming in 2023 and beyond. I think it will still be good for 60 plus FPS using ultra quality settings with ray tracing enabled. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you can expect to see around 130 FPS at 1080p on ultra high quality. In Far Cry 6, it should be firmly above 6700 XT by about 10 FPS for a total of 116 FPS. Watch Dogs Legion is a difficult game to run on ultra settings even at 1080p, but with RX 7600 XT pumping out around 122 FPS average, you may even consider it a good time to play this game on a high refresh rate monitor. Cyberpunk 2077 on high preset will be good for around 135 FPS on average. 7600 XT will be a good reason to crank some of those settings up to psycho. The RTX 3000 series NVIDIA graphics cards perform much better at 4K resolution. Still, on average, RX 7600 XT should be close to RTX 3080 performance. FYI, the upcoming RTX 4060 will also challenge RTX 3080, but that is a topic for the next video. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, RTX 3080 cannot catch a break even at 4K, losing to 7600 XT by about 5 FPS. Similar story in Far Cry 6, where RX 7600 XT may offer up to 78 FPS at 4K resolution. In Watch Dogs Legion at 55 FPS, 7600 XT is significantly better than RX 6700 XT, with up to 50% difference. Not bad, considering that 6700 XT MSRP is $479. 7600 XT should provide a flagship-like performance at 40 FPS on average in Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K on high-quality preset, where 6700 XT was falling behind, offering just 27 FPS average. In conclusion, I think that RX 7600 XT will be a game-changer for the mid-range sector, bringing good value to those of us who want to game at 1440p. Definitely do not expect it to allow you to enter the 4K gaming on a budget, because upcoming games will be much more demanding. Game developers are raising the bar once again. Just look at the latest Unreal 5 engine demos and you will understand what I mean. Photorealistic open-world games may be coming sooner than you think. But what do you think about it? I'll be waiting for you in the comments below to have a chat about it. It was I, Vadim, until next time.